Hi, and welcome to another video by The Homelift Guy. Today, we'll be talking about homelift technologies. And I've always found this to be a very interesting question because it's not a question people think about before they actually start looking into getting a homelift. When people first get the idea of getting a homelift, they imagine that their homelift will be just like all the other lifts they've ever seen and used in their lives, you know, in commercial buildings or in hotels, your typical traction lift from a brand like Otis or Coney or Schindler. But then after a bit of research, they quickly realize that these kind of lifts are awful for homes. And there's a simple reason behind that. These lifts are designed for commercial buildings. Buildings that have a lot of space are planned way ahead of time with a special huge provision made for the lifts. Because all of these traction lifts, they use up a ton of space. There's the five foot pit at the bottom, the huge machine rip up on top, but most importantly, the fact that because there's a shaft and a counterweight and guide rails and sliding doors, at the end of the day, if you have a six foot by six foot space ready for your lift, you'll be lucky if you get three foot by three foot a standing area. That's barely a quarter of the area available. In fact, I personally feel that traction lifts are so ill-suited to the home that in my ranking of the best home lift technologies, they come in at a number four. And we'll get into why that is exactly in the later part of this video, but for now I'll jump to the good part, which is who do I think is number one? That answer for me is screw driven lifts. Now most people haven't heard of screw driven lifts until they start looking for a home lift. The technology is actually fairly simple. You have a giant steel screw going from the very bottom to the very top and then a platform or a cabin is attached to the screw via a nut. As this nut turns, the platform or the cabin moves up or down. Now why is this a good technology? Well for starters, because it's a screw driven lift, it is entirely self-contained. That means that there's no pit, there's no machine room, but also there's no huge oil tank at the back like a hydraulic or no electric box. Everything you see is inside of the shaft. And as if that wasn't space saving enough, Unlike a traction, a screw drive can do both cabins and platform lifts. And when you're going for a platform lift and a screw drive, that's really when you're getting the most space saving combination. I'd estimate that with a screw drive platform lift, you usually get about 70% standing space versus 30 to 40% on a traction. In terms of design, I'm also a fan of screw driven lifts because most of them can do four sides glass. And that really makes a difference in the home, especially if you can put it in the middle of the staircase or outdoors, because that's when you manage to use a space you weren't using anyways. And because it's all glass, it doesn't feel as if you're using up that space. It feels very open. It feels very breathy. And the lift kind of becomes a showcase inside your home, something, a special feature that looks really, really nice. But most importantly, my preference for the screw drive technology stems from its lifetime value. These lifts last a long time. I've personally seen lifts up in Sweden that are 20, 25, 30 years old, and they all work perfectly fine, which is even more impressive because the number of maintenances you need to do on these lifts is actually very small. It's only about twice a year. And when you start crunching the numbers, that's when you really see the beauty of these lifts. They last a long, long time. They require very little maintenance, and they also operate on a 1.5 kilowatt motor, which is almost three times less than the other technologies out there. So what that means is your electricity bill from the moment you buy the lift till the moment you finally take it down 15, 20, 25 years in the future is going to be three times less than the other brands. Which is why if people are really looking for the lift for their forever home, I tend to recommend screw drive lifts because even if the upfront cost is a little high, the lifetime value of the lift more than makes up for it. Now, screw drive lifts, what are the cons? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the first one is speed because much like hydraulic and vacuum, these follow a particular set of legislations. In Europe, it's known as the EN 8141. And that means that they can only go up to 0.15 meters per second. That's about 30 feet per minute. 
Now that's 2.5 times slower than your typical traction lift. But as far as I'm concerned, a house rarely has more than four or five stops. And when you only have a few stops like that, I've found that the speed doesn't really tend to bother the clients. It's not that long of a ride. The second downside, and perhaps the biggest downside for screw-driven lifts, is they tend to be the more expensive option out there. Simply put, that level of technology comes at a cost, and that cost means that you end up with a higher price because you're getting a better product. So that's number one. What about number two? Number two on the list, we have hydraulic elevators. These lifts share many of the advantages of screw-driven lifts. For example, they also don't need a machine room, and they also need a much smaller pit, although it is slightly bigger than screw drive because usually it's four to six inches versus two inches for a screw drive. Similarly, thanks to the hydraulic system that doesn't need all that counterweight space, etc., they're a lot more space saving than traction. And finally, these lifts are also attached to a hydraulic system that pushes from the bottom. So unlike traction, and much like the screw drive, they can't fall down, which I personally feel makes them a little bit safer. Now when it comes to the downsides of hydraulic, as far as I'm concerned, there's really only one, but it's a big one, and it has to do with the very core of this technology, the oil. You see, the way a hydraulic lift works is it has a huge oil tank at the back of the lift. And to go up, that oil is pumped into the hydraulic system, hence raising the lift. When going down, that oil is then gently pushed back into the oil tank. Hydraulics is a well-known, well-tested technology, and you'll see it everywhere, from lifts to your car to any type of machine. And always, the problem comes down to leaks. The most common one that the majority of hydraulic lifts encounter is micro leaks. That's just a little bit of oil gets lost every time it's pushed in and pushed out. And it, it's really not a lot of oil, but after a year or two, suddenly the cabin or the platform stops short of the floor and you start having a one centimeter gap, two centimeters, one inch. And that's really a problem if you have clients who are in a wheelchair and suddenly can't get out of the lift because of that gap. At that point, there's a simple fix, but it's a costly one, which is to top up the oil tank with more oil. And that's also what makes the hydraulic maintenances a bit more expensive. Now, these micro leaks is if you're lucky. If you're unlucky with hydraulic, you'll get a macro leak, which means suddenly the 100 liters of oil that you have in that tank, and this is not normal oil, this is, this is very heavy, greasy, toxic, flammable oil, will suddenly find themselves leaking out into your house. Now that can have all types of problems from destroying the interior, smell problems. Generally speaking, if this happens, you're going to have to redo a lot of work when it comes to interior renovation. That is really my only problem with hydraulic is the fact that you're bringing into your home a 100 liter oil tank. And I understand why some customers don't feel comfortable with that. Now, number three in this list is vacuum elevators. As a concept, I love vacuum elevators. And on paper, they seem perfect. The way a vacuum elevator works is they suck out the air above the capsule and by vacuum, basically suck the capsule up. And then to go back down, they simply let the air out at the bottom and your capsule is kind of gently lowered on a cushion of air. These lifts also have a small pit, also have small headroom. They're extremely space saving. They actually have the smallest lifts of any of the four technologies that I talk about in this video. And they can do four sides glass in a round shape. On paper, these lifts seem perfect. But in order to function, they require an air pump at the top. And that air pump is so very loud. Um. They actually recommend installing the air pump outdoors because the sound indoors is such a problem. But I personally know of a few cases where when the pump was installed outdoors, the neighbors complained so much that the clients had to tear the lift down. That is not the kind of thing that you want to happen when you're putting so much money into a home lift and you're definitely not getting it reimbursed. 
Furthermore, the round shape of the lift, while it may look cool, and it does look cool, actually requires a lot more civil works when it comes to adapting your floors to the entrance of these doors and the cutout of the shaft within your floors. It's a lot more complicated process compared to the more traditional square or rectangular shape that you're finding with all the other technologies out there. Finally, and this is a personal opinion, while it is cool on a small lift to feel that cushion of air, I always feel slightly uncomfortable in a taller vacuum lift to think that the only thing below me in the ground is essentially a cushion of air. And I can never help thinking, what if it's installed wrong and suddenly the panel blows out and I come crashing down, which is not something that would happen with hydraulic where you've got the hydraulic system or the screw where you're always attached to the screw. Which is why, despite the fact that I would love to put vacuum lifts higher up on this list, they come in at a number three. Now number four, traction lifts. I've already kind of given my opinion on traction lifts up front. I don't think they're great for the home, mostly because of that deep pit. And there's one thing that people don't always think about when digging the pit is most home insurance contracts have a clause that you can't do any damage to the foundation or the supporting pillars or else that insurance becomes void. And people often don't realize that if they're installing a traction lift, they're essentially voiding their home insurance. It's something to check and be careful of because I've seen it happen. Then of course there's the large machine room up top. It means it's harder to do a lift that goes all the way up to the terrace, which is what's really nice when you have home elevators. It uses the bigger 5.5 kilowatt motor, so that means more electricity, and it's got the huge cutout size. It also requires a lot more maintenance than the first three technologies. And these maintenances can get quite costly because unlike the other three technologies, there are a lot more moving parts in the traction lift and you often have parts that go wrong and then need to be replaced. And that's really where traction lift companies make their money, if you understand what I mean. There is, however, a huge pro to traction lifts, and that is price. If a customer has already built a reinforced concrete shaft, or if they've bought a house that already has a reinforced concrete shaft, then traction lifts become a very attractive option because the price is going to be a lot lower than hydraulic or screw drive, usually by a factor of about two. Those are the few moments when I do actually recommend traction lifts because it just makes so much more sense financially speaking. I don't recommend they build one, however, because if you take the shaft and the cost of a traction lift and the pit, then you're not very far off from a really nice screwdriver lift with its own self-enclosed shaft. So in that case, might as well pay just a little bit more and get the much better solution. So what's my conclusion on this? Well, when it comes to home lift technologies, screwdriver is the way to go. They have all of the advantages, no pit, no machine room, super space saving, super safe, looks good, for only one disadvantage, which is the price. If, however, you're on a very tight budget, then hydraulic is also a pretty good option. Although you have to remain aware of the risks that can be created by that 100 liter oil tank and the higher lifetime costs that you're going to have to pay because of the energy consumption of the motor and the more frequent maintenances. Finally, my personal recommendation would be to avoid vacuum because of the noise and traction unless you already have a reinforced concrete shaft in which case traction can be pretty good if your budget is tight. As always, I hope this video was useful to you and I encourage you to subscribe either on my YouTube account, my Quora, or to go check out my website. If you do get a home lift after watching this video, please do let me know which technology you chose in the comments below. Thank you very much everyone, the home lift guy.